Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this screencast in which we are going to talk about the security market line. And for that purpose, first of all, we need to write our CAPM equation and look at what each of the component in the equation means to us. So this is our CAPM equation. On the um, left hand side, we see ERA, which is the expected return on the asset. You could also have denoted this ERA by the letter K that would have made no difference. So therefore, let's write it here. Expected asset return is what this ERA means to us and it could also be written as letter K. On the right hand side, you see the first item RF which stands for our risk free rate of return and it captures the pure time value of money. Simply, it captures the value that you can get by waiting, by, not, by choosing not to uh, receive a set of money today, rather preferring to wait till the next time period and the reward for waiting would be captured by the RF or the risk free rate of return. Then after that you see a plus sign and then you have a Greek letter beta with a subscript of A and that tells us the level of systematic risk of this asset because beta always measures the systematic risk. After that we see some square um, bracket in which we have the difference between the expected return on the market and the risk-free rate of return. This indicates to us that by virtue of investing in the market which is a risky place we can earn some extra return over and above the risk-free rate. So therefore investing in the market fetches us some premium over and above the risk-free risk -free rate and that is what we write here. The difference between ERM and RF gives us the market risk premium. Now what we are going to do is we are going to assume a few numbers and calculate the assets return and then later we are going to depict it on a graph. So this is our data here in which we are talking about a share of stock issued by Federal Express which has a beta of 1.25 the rate of return fetched by the US Treasury bills is equal to 5% and that is going to serve us as a proxy for risk free rate and then we have been given the expected return on standards and poor's 500 which is 15%. Standards and poor's 500 my friends is a market index and therefore this serves to us as a proxy for market return. Now let us compute the expected return on this stock of Federal Express. So in our CAPM equation we plug in our values. For risk free rate of return we pick up this 5% from here and write it here. For beta we pick up this number and write it here. For market rate of return we pick up this number and write it here and then subtract the risk free rate of return 5% which we again pick up from here. So the calculated expected return on this asset would be 17.5%. I am repeating again, we have denoted the expected return on the asset as ERA here. You could also have written K of A. That would have meant the same thing. Now let us denote these results on a graph paper. On the x-axis, my friends, we are denoting the beta or the level of systematic risk. On the y-axis, we are measuring the expected return, uh, which is denoted here in this graph uh, by the letter K, but it means to us the same thing like in the previous slide here. This ERA here is the same thing as the KI here. So now let us uh, build in our data components. The first thing that we write on the y-axis is the risk-free rate of return, 5%. And the second thing that we write is the return in the marketplace 15 percent. Now on the x-axis first of all we write the market beta which we know by default is equal to 1 and what we do is we locate two points on this graph space. I'm going to indicate those two points to you now. The first point is this one where the return is 5 percent and that's equal to our risk-free rate. Observe that at this level of return the beta is equal to 0 because we are talking about a risk-free asset. So therefore, since a risk-free asset doesn't have any risk, we have a beta of zero or zero systematic risk. 
The second point in our graph space is this one here where we are talking about the market rate of return 15% and the corresponding beta is 1. Now what we are going to do is we need to join this point with this point and extend the line and when we do that what we are going to get is the security market line or SML. Now let us build in the remaining details from our question and let's first of all talk about this region highlighted by this bracket. Uh, if you observe the risk free rate of return is 5% but instead of uh, investing in a risk free asset if you take your money to the market which now is a risky place that's why it has a beta of 1. So if you take your money to the market you earn some extra level of return over and above the risk free return. So risk free assets return is 5% and the market return is 15%. So there's an extra 10% to be gained by investing in the market and that extra 10% we call the market risk premium. Now let us also build in the information of our asset, the Federal Express share. The calculated expected return was 17.5% on that asset. We did that calculation a little while ago. And we were also supplied with an estimate uh, of beta of this asset which was equal to 1.25. So what you observe is the beta of this Federal Express share is higher as compared to the market thereby indicating that this asset is probably more risky as compared to the market. That's why it has a higher beta. So when the risk is more, the return should also be more and that is what you observe. The marketplace gives you a 15% return but if you choose to invest your money in the FedEx stock, it can give you some extra return, 17.5% in this case. So now let's look at the difference between the risk-free rate of return 5% and the assets return 17.5%. So by, um, by choosing to invest our money in the risky asset, that is FedEx in this case, we are earning some extra level of return and that is what we call as the assets risk premium. This region here on the graph is known as the assets risk premium in this case equal to 17.5% minus 5% that is 12.5% and this line here I will again reiterate is known as the security market line the SML which we can derive by combining two points in the risk return space point number one the return where the beta is equal to zero and the return where the beta is equal to one and then extending the line onwards thank you very much ladies and gentlemen bye bye